Hey, Jose, how are you? Hello, teacher. Good evening. I'm fine. Thank you. And you? I'm good. How was your day? It was really cool. Um, I had to do some documents, but it was cool. Okay. What about you? Um, yeah, I did many I did many things today. I was in the street all day. So I'm very I was very beat. I was very tired. You have you have to to go out all day. Yes, I was actually I was running errands. So I had to be everywhere. I was going up and down, up and down the city. In San Salvador or in another department? I was in, I started in San Salvador. I had to go to Mexicanos. For Mexicanos, I had to go to Merliot. I think I had to go back to Mexicanos. Oh, man. But it's the traffic. I mean, it's it's, it's terrible. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking uh, the, the gas is so expensive, but the car always in the street. Yes. Yes, the cars are always in the street. Mm -hmm. That's true. Hello, Ana Gladys, how are you? Hello, teacher. Good evening. How was your day today? Uh, it was a busy day because uh trying to but, but productive day because uh today I assisted some customers that they that a promo there there is a an insurance company that is offering it's like a bundle we have with that insurance company it's not so common those customer calls for me it was so good because they got uh, the equipments for free and also they they also, the, this insurance offers a, uh, uh, it's like a, it's not a discount. It's, um, oh my God, I forgot the name of this. <laughs> Subsidy. And so, okay. uh -huh, you know that when you talk to these customers and you uh, tell them, you know, you have this and this for free and the service is for you on this ride, blah, 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 is for sure a sell. So, that, that was good because today I assisted two customers for that insurance company and, and those are sales on my mm -hmm. end. So I, I'm, I must achieve my goal this month because these two months, uh, uh, these two uh, months ago, I haven't achieved my goal. And, and, and this is a must, the third month. You haven't hit your metrics. Yeah. I remember the quarter. All of us in sales, we are numbers. We know that. Yeah. We need to deal with it. Yeah. But are, are your metrics reachable? And they, mm, not at all, because they increase the revenue goal $5,000 more for every month. But the incoming calls decrease like 75%. There are days during the month that I don't get any inbound call. And because uh, people refer a friend and stuff like that is because we sell or there are opportunities with um, mm, other channels, maybe English and it, they get in contact with a Spanish customer, they refer it to us. There is like a round robin at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we have those opportunities. Last last month, I was missing $580 to achieve the 80%, which is $16,000. So this wow. month is nice. Remember that in sales, there is not, a, I almost achieved the goal. Yes. You achieve, you reach it or not. <laughs> You have to. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
I'm working so, on that right now. But but like uh, but it is it's reachable. I mean, mm, this new goal I haven't reached it in the last two uh, two months. I hope to reach it this month. I hope so. I hope so. What are the objections you get? Too expensive, or I must sell not only the equipment, the electronic logbook, I must sell also dash cam uh, for, uh, to, mm -hmm. the, they do not prevent accidents, but at least uh, they help to insurance for disputes and the, the customer itself. But to make someone understand that this equipment helps them to, at the end, to save money is kind of difficult. And because they have their budget too, right? Yeah. And these companies, they spend a lot in paying insurance. We're talking about they are paying like $20,000 for insurance policies, stuff oh, like that. So they don't want to spend any more. Exactly. And they want the cheaper service. And in economy in the U.S. is not so good. People are closing companies. And the transportation business, the trucking service is not so good because the fuel price, gallons, gasoline, and they are not, what they say, their word is that we are not earning the same as in the past. People is paying less for every log and we are losing money. So that is why they are like uh, working list or together as they for example there are owner operators i have my truck i have my company i have my authority you have your company david has uh, his company what they do is just uh, why don't we like a cooperation like a something like that because why don't we work just under one authority but we are going to work with you under your name and I will be your employee. So people is doing that a lot. They wow. are like creating associations. And then what happens is that after you lose the account. Mm -hmm. And they, if, if they were active customers, they churn. They, they cannot, they don't return the equipment. We don't ask for, for, for them or we don't collect them back. Uh, because in case they want to get the service back, they can. But the new policy is time. <laughs> Remember, I told you September the first. If I, as I'm assisting a customer in that situation, and he had our service, but for uh, business purposes, he paused his operation. But then this year, everything is working different, and I want to reactivate my service. Now, now the policy says, okay, I'm going to give you again the service, but you need to pay up for the whole year. And people is waiting to pay just $60 per month. And you are asking them to pay $600. It's like, we need to deal with all of that. Deal with that kind of ambiguity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, it's interesting because we learn every day new ways. We need to find the other way that Everyone won, win, I'm sorry, everyone win, and the customers, we, because sometimes it doesn't matter if I need to sell a service with the lowest, uh, the, the, the highest discount I can offer. It doesn't matter if I'm losing revenue to achieve my goal, but mm -hmm. it's a sale. I prefer to get on my pocket $300 than to lose that, that sale. Yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. That is how we are working right now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But you're you're positive, so that's good. Yeah, we must. <laughs> I've been in this situation for the last seventeen years in sales, and my uh, it, this is all the same. Every month we start from zero. We are new. Then we're running. At the end, we achieve or not our goal, but then the next day is a new month. Maybe I think our mind got used to these um, short-term goals. And maybe for that reason, I don't 
thing. I don't feel like uh, tired for being in this stress for the last 17 years. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't stress out. Mm, could be. Tough. What is we'll the what what is the most memorable or what is a call that you will never forget? A call that I will never forget. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh my god. It's so yes, I remember when I was selling uh, in not it wasn't the oh then my next uh, account was HP <laughs> the opposite the competitors mm -hmm. so I uh -huh, I was selling the the warranty extension and I remember there was this uh, lady that was excited and so she started to uh, yell and cursing and also how do you say when someone is uh, saying bad words is like uh, bad, bad mouthing bad what bad mouthing mouth ah, okay yeah mouthing. she was yelling and about mouthing and you know what <laughs> you know i don't know suddenly i answered because this was an english code. and she got uh, <laughs> also she was angry but she got really angry when she discovered that i am salvadorian that was a latin woman assisting her mm -hmm. and I thought she was yelling. At the end, I thought, but you know what? Uh, I'm Hispanic, Spanish, I'm Latin, but I speak two languages and you just one. You just speak English. Mm -hmm. <gasps> she said, oh, and I was, my God, what I did. If wanted to hear this thought. <laughs> no, but that's, yeah, when they say, I want to speak with an American, I am an American. Exactly, exactly. We learned that. I'm, I'm American too, right? Mm -hmm. oh, a the, real the American. I am a real American. I exactly. remember one time this lady, this lady, she told me, my father, my father fought in the war. What about your grandfather? Where was he from? England. Oh, you know what? My father, my grandfather, his father, and everybody, they were all from this land. Uh, <laughs> you know, one thing I learned to answer if they were like, I believe that that was like in the last seven or, or 10 years ago, because mm -hmm. now you don't hear people. Well, I don't, I haven't received any call for someone that is asking me to speak with an American. No longer. I hear that in my, in my calls. I don't know if I know their accounts. I don't know. But uh, one thing that I learned to explain, and you know what, uh, I'm working in this call center, but this call center is the same as the American embassy. That mm -hmm. area belongs to America. So my telephone, my servers, my computer belongs to America. So don't worry, it's okay. Ah, okay, and we continue. So uh, making the comparison that the call center works and it's the same land like an American embassy in the world, it was like they were, <laughs> lowering yes <laughs> the rest <Russians. laughs> <laughs> okay uh, that was the bright okay. idea that one of my managers gave me one day and it works until this time it works so I can tell you mm, one thing I remember one time I had a call and I was doing mm -hmm. um, I was doing I was doing bookings for hotels. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you know, like people called, yes, I need a, a hotel near the airport in Boston. Mm -hmm. So part of the call had to be, oh, great. What brings you to Boston? You know, mm -hmm. um, and, and things like that. But hold on, let me check one thing. Mm -hmm. So there was another, this lady, she said, she called once and she said, she told me, I would like to 
I have a hotel. I need a hotel room near the Boston Memorial Hospital mm -hmm. for three adults. No, she said for two adults. No, wait, now she's 18, three adults. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, that's nice. So your baby now is 18. He says, yeah, she turned 18 two months ago. Oh, wow, happy birthday. You know, okay, mm -hmm. great. And um, what brings you to Boston? You want it really close to the hospital? Or she says, yes, that's where I'm taking my baby. She is a stage, oh. stage four cancer. Oh, God. Uh, and and I said, oh my, I, I, I apologize. No, she says, don't worry about mm -hmm. it. It's oh. it's difficult, David. And um, my mother had passed away like six months ago from cancer. Wow. So I I told her, is your daughter strong? Oh yes, David. She's very strong. She has had four operations. Wow. And, the, and the doctors have only given her six months to live. Mm. And I told her, don't worry about it. The doctors gave my mother six months to live 10 years ago. Oh, really? Awesome. But you know, no, but you know what, Anna? I lied. Mm. In order to make her make feel her better. Feel, yeah, because she was crying. She says, really? Yes. Because wow. my, my mother was a fighter. Push it up. Yeah, I said, my mother was a fighter. If your daughter is a fighter, forget what the doctors say. My mother lived 10 will years. Make it. And, you know, she mm -hmm. and she started crying and telling me everything. Oh, and my think, God. I, maybe we're cool. Yeah, I think sometimes that happens, that you feel more comfortable with a stranger because you know you will never see him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. And she thanked me. You know, I don't know you. But I wish I can hug you and thank you, David. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Why don't you call me back in one year? But your daughter calls me and tell me that you want hotels in Hawaii. And she <laughs> says, I promise I will. Thank you. <laughs> My um, God. You know, I at least I made her happy five exactly. minutes. Five minutes. That's or right. I gave her hope for five minutes. Mm -hmm. That's because good. being 24 hours a day depressed, mm -hmm. I, I gave her a little hope. Yeah, and that was awesome. <laughs> that was a sound you're in. Yeah, no, and you know, when, when I hung up the call, I remember I started crying. I was like, oh, man. I started crying. Mm -hmm. because it, I, I so I will always remember that call. That call, uh-huh. And I think, I think she will always remember me. I will always remember her. And uh, this was two years ago, three years ago, maybe. But I oh, hope okay. she's okay. I, you know, I hope things exactly. are better now. Mm-hmm. That her daughter could make it. <laughs> yes. David, how are you? What, teacher? A little tighter. Yes, why? I don't know. Maybe the life. <laughs> have you ever heard uh, that? Have you ever heard that song, Piano Man? I don't it's, remember. It, wait, it's, it's 12 o'clock on a Saturday. Then the regular crowd shuffles in. Do you know how that's? Sing us a song, you're the piano man. Sing us a song. Uh, Billy Joel. Billy Joel, yes. Yeah. Yes, Have you, yes. You know, the older the older I get, the more I understand that song. <laughs> really? Because I, I never pay attention to, to it, but I I think I, I, I do it. I will do it. Yes, you know, pay attention yeah. to it. I mean, the song it is about a piano man. But he's telling the story about the regular, you know, the regular people that come to the bar. He tells the story of those rich businessmen that they're so rich, but they have no, they have no family and no friends because they are always traveling. So they pretend they're happy, but they're not. I mean, they have a lot of money, but they're not. He talks about the bartender. He talks about the waiter, the waitress. He talks about that 
Well, I love I love the beginning when he says, "There's an old man sitting next to me, making love to his tonic and gin." <laughs> you know, you can imagine the depression of that man. Yes. But because what you told me about life, there's one part I really love about that song. He says, the manager gives me a smile because he knows that it's me that the people have come to see to forget about life for a while. Okay. You know, and I, I really like that part because, yeah, sometimes people go, is what I was telling Anna, that... um. I lied to that mother about that that had the child with cancer. I lied to her to make her happy for a while. You know, because that's life. I mean, her life was 24 hours depression, crying. And I cannot imagine as a father to be in that situation. But um, I I I you know, I made her forget about life for a while. So, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Listen to the song. Pay attention to it. The more I listen to it, the more okay. I, I understand it. <laughs> All right. So, um, and Mr. Isaias, he was, you were working today, right? Excuse me? No, you told me that you were working today, right? Yes. Oh. Awesome. Okay, class. So let's go. You know, I was I was thinking today that I wanted to do some readings and I wanted to do some listening, but I can't because I have to use YouTube and YouTube is very protective for the rights. So, for example, um, the hecho, I wanted to use Piano Man today. But they told me I can't because if I put that, because this video goes on YouTube. And if YouTube detects the song, they they can um, block the video. So, too bad we can't. But let me let me open let me open the um let me open my portal please Fine. La -di -da -di -di -da. La -da -di -da. That's a beautiful song. Sing us a song, you're the piano man. There's the portal, portal, portal open. When you're stressed, what do you do to relax, David? I... Uh, real and uh, real relax me a lot, and I write, write, let me relax too, and walk. I like to walk too. Okay, good. What is your favorite Coelho book? What is my favorite? Coelho book, Paulo Coelho. My favorite Coelho book. Well, I, I will. Uh, the mountain, I read the, the alchemist, and I read, I read, I read so. Brida? I, <laughs> what? Did you read Brida? Brida was good. No, no, no. No, Brida, no. Wait, which is the mountain? Which is the mountain? I don't know if the name is the mountain. It is, is the name is something like next to the mountain. I sit down and cry, yes. something like that. Oh, yeah, uh, Aurea Piedras, Mesente Yore, yes. Yes, it's something like that. But you but see that. 
it's it's good, but that's what I'm telling you about Coelho. If you read uh, a la orilla del Rio Piedra, yes, yes, and then you read yeah. Brida, and then you read, they're all the same. They're all the same. They're very good, but they're all the same, like the same story. But the alchemist really is beautiful. Yes. Have you read the alchemist, Isaías or Anna? Um, when I met my wife, she was my girlfriend, of course. And um, I remember for one anniversary, I gave her a book. Because in that time, in that time, I used to read a lot. I used to like to read. I was always reading a book. But I lost, I lost the habit. And when time passes by, now I don't really have time. But in that time, I remember I told my girlfriend, do you like to read? She says, no. I mean, I read. So one time for our anniversary, I bought her um, The Alchemist. And I put, and I remember I wrote, if you don't, I recommend you to read this book. And if after reading this book, you still don't want to read, then don't read. But if you like this book, then you will see, you will see how beautiful it is, uh, how beautiful it can be to read. And she read the book like in two or three days. She loved the book. So after that, I remember I passed her all my books. Brida, La Bruja de Blair. No, La Bruja, I forgot what. But, but really, um, David, please read that book, eh, Travesuras de una Niña Mala, from Vargas Llosa. It's well, very, yes, very good. Yes, yes. It's very, very good. And también está Cien Años de Soledad, right? Okay. But did you see some, some, some kind of confusing, but yes. it's interesting. David, honestly, honestly, do you think Rocket Dalton was good? Yes, yes. It's very deep. It, the the problem is that uh, he has carrying in a, a problem itself, but but he's uh, wow when uh, the their feelings in their in their, their writing is uh, so strong. Yes. You it's know, very good. You know, sometimes do you know what is overrated? Overreading. Overrated. Reading beyond the no. letters or something like that? No. Oh. Hey, where's my camera? Overrated. Es sobrevaluado. Oh. Okay, look. So if I tell you rate the movie from one to ten. Ah, okay, okay. Rate. So if I say yes. overrated, es sobrevaluado. Underrated is the contrary. Okay. Okay. For example, in El Salvador, we tend to idolize people. Let me give you an example. El Magico Gonzalez. El Magico Gonzalez. No. <laughs> huh? I have a bad experience with that man. I don't like him. <laughs> oh, really? Why? What happened? Because the thing is that, you know, I am already an announcer and I work as a radio announcer man. <laughs> some years ago and oh, really? this, um, in, in which yeah, radio yeah I, i'm a radio announcer as, as a professional radio announcer but are and, you a radio announcer or radio uh, dj no really well or i bro used to do this both and i work for uh, 129 oh i uh, remember that yeah. was like classic rock no no you know, at that time it was 70s, 80s, and 90s uh, music. Yes, it was uh, classic music. Como, yeah, classic, I've been waiting classical. for a girl. Exactly, exactly. 
Okay. So I, remember, I, would, I used to listen to that. El Crunchies, La Lichi, Luis Valibrera, el Dr. Rivas, todos ellos. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of my colleagues was, in, ay, the name of this man, the one that uh, after some years he was presenting sports. I, I don't remember. The thing is that I had my my shift starting from nine and into nine to twelve, but sometimes I needed to cover my the other the other shift because this man Mexico Gonzalez, he is so get used to drugs, so he can be drugging himself and, and he will be okay, but people around him maybe they are not get used to the same rhythm. And this, my one of my colleagues, sometimes I was about to go to my shift and I needed to stay there the next three hours because this man was with Michael Gonzalez, drinking and drugging and stuff like that. And one of those days, suddenly they appeared. He was so uh, rude. He was, so, I don't know, he was, I, I don't, for me, I don't like that man because he's not an example of a good man. He's a drug man. And he is uh, rude. He, I don't like. I don't yeah. remember the name of my colleague. I'm, I'm going to remember in the next minutes. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. But my colleague didn't get the same rhythm like him. And my colleague at the end, he, he was, uh, we saw him walking at the streets like, my uh, God, what's going on with me today? Como un mendigo. <laughs> Like a bum. Uh, yeah. Hasta desnudo andaba en la calle, tan droga que andaba. Yeah. Mi compañero, porque no le agarró al ritmo, porque Mike González se metí, se metía y él andaba normal. O sea, él andaba normal. No, eso no me gusta ese hombre. Wow. No, but <laughs> you know. sorry for you. <laughs> no, no, you know, no, that actually, you know, as a soccer player, he was very good. Mm -hmm. He was excellent. And many people say that, but in El Salvador, we tend, tendemos to exaggerate. You know, many people say, no, pero el mejor de la historia es el mágico. The mágico is the best in history. It's like, no, come on. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. he was good. Yes, he was excellent. Pero si han notado, no pasan de los mismos 10 goles que siempre muestran que él hizo en, en, en YouTube. So, what I'm the reason why I was telling David is yes, uh, because we tend to overrate our people. For example, if if somebody says, Hey, in El Salvador, who is uh, your best soccer player? See, sí, yes, it's El Magico, of course. You know, and, and people say, Oh, yeah, the Magico, he was a good player, he was one of the best. Yes. In the past. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, but he was one of the best. But no, it's about, oh, no, he's the best in history. Lo que decía, <laughs> Messi no lo hacía. Yeah. You know, Messi no hacía lo que decía. No, no, come on, really, no. I tell people, la bajo la nube, como, hey, no. Okay. <laughs> en ese entonces solo jugaban un juego por semana, man. Los de hoy están jugando en la Champions, three, four games a week. But if and then if you say, hey, do you have a painter? Who's the most famous painter in El Salvador? I don't know much about painting. I, I was listening about one only the Quijadorias. Quijadorias. Okay. There are a, a brother, so, so one of them is a writer, I think, and the other one is a painter. Oh, okay. I okay, think. so good, but people here in El Salvador would say to uh, say George, <laughs> hey, Fernando George. York, yes, uh -huh. Fernando York, and um, and really, I think Fernando York is not a good painter. No, he was known. He was like a public person, the most known. Yes. by people. But you know, if if you look at Fernando York. He copies paintings. Technique. He copies paintings of Picasso. Mm -hmm. Y solo le pone un toque mm -hmm. salvadoreño como maceta o barro or something. But it, everything is Picasso. <laughs> so mm -hmm. 
So what I'm saying is maybe he is a good painter, but he's not original. Mm -hmm. Pero nosotros son, a veces la gente sin saber algo. Oh, Fernando Yortes, lo máximo. Mira, él pintó la, la... And yes, he is good, but I have seen better painters. Mm -hmm. So when I ask, when I ask David Samuel about eh, Roque Dalton, Roque Dalton sí creo que es alguien que, del que nos deberíamos de jactar. <laughs> de que he was a good, he was a good writer. He he was. He was a good poet. Yes. Very deeply. Mm -hmm. Philosophical. Yes. Do you think do you think Roque Dalton today would still have the same mentality? Uh, you no, know, because uh, uh, everything with the pass of the time, everybody knows that uh, everything was the same. The the, the war, uh, the oppression, uh, ev everybody was the same. And uh, the, the, the ideology, I don't know if it's ideology, but uh, mm -hmm. the ideology was lost. And uh, only one, the, 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 looking for the power everybody was looking the power and yes uh, because for uh, example yes. no but you know like sometimes i think about for example remember the water wows remember okay fernando yor let's say um como se llamaba el sacerdote que asesinaron monseñor romero monseñor okay in that time they really believed for the poor people right yes and they never imagined that 20 or 30 years later, really, you know, 20 or 30 years later, the, they will take power. You know, uh, you know, like, for example, I, I don't think, for, uh, I don't think Roque Dalton, I don't think... Um, I don't think that Monsignor Romero ever imagined that FMLN was going to be the government. Y era lo que él más quería. So imagine, imagine like, oh my God, they're the government. Imagine how happy he was. Y después la gran decepción que ellos dijeron, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that, that's, what I'm, that's what I imagine, you know, que pensara Ali Primera from the Guarawaos. What would um, all these people, the re the revolutionists, you know? <laughs> Yo escuché una canción, Ana, quizá usted la escuchó, pero se la cancelaron súper rápido y de hecho se me olvida qué grupo la canta y esos desaparecieron de la faz de la tierra, <laughs> que era un grupo de aquí, que hicieron una versión de casas de cartón, pero la versión nueva. Eh, tirándole al frente porque decía que triste se oye la lluvia hoy en mi gran mansión you know? so I saw it in a video like a meme or something like that on the mm. web no but it was uh, no no it was and I don't know what happened to that band but they disappeared <laughs> maybe they were killed <laughs> Maybe no. Okay, let me see. Let me see the screen. Let's do. Where's the lady? Listen. Um. Do you know how movies are rated? Mm. I guess it's because they made sure how many people go and watch them. Okay. No, actually, no. Um, I want you, how are movies rated? In the past, there were a, a group of people uh, from 
in a church, a Catholic church. Mm, no, okay. I'm going to give an example, but please understand. It's just an example, okay? What is a triple X movie? Oh, that is for adults? Exactly. Okay, there it, you go. For it has scenes that young people can... Okay, not exactly. So a triple X movie is exactly only for adults. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the movie is rated triple X. Mm. So that's what I'm, that's what I want you to understand. Rate. Right. Lo que yes. Okay. So the best in in English movies are rated like this. We have G. The movie is G. G for general. So that means somebody can be five years old and somebody can be 75 years old, and the movie is for them. Mm -hmm. So that means that there is no violence on the movie or no drastic violence, no bad words, and simple vocabulary. Correct? Mm -hmm. And then we have PG-13. What do you think PG-13 is? Over 13 years or young, younger. Yes, if you're, if you're 13, you have to be with your parent. Mm -hmm. But remember, you're 13, so maybe, maybe there's a little violence. Maybe there's some bad words. Maybe no nudity, but maybe, I don't know, a girl in bikini. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is R. R. R is, R, R is 17 and older. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, probability there's violence, there's blood, there is uh, nudity. Okay, so mm -hmm. what I recommend to you when you want to practice English, your listening, your skills, you should watch PG-13 movies. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. You shouldn't okay. watch movies like um, R, because R, not because of the violence, but maybe because... Caliche, there's a lot of, you know. So if you watch a G or a PG-13, really you're going to understand 80 to 100% of the movie. Okay. Have, you know Tom Hanks, correct? Mm -hmm. Did you ever watch the movie from Tom Hanks? The movie is big? No. Nah. <laughs> I saw it, but I remember. I saw. I guess I saw it in Spanish. No, no, no. I saw it subtitle. subtitle. Oh, well, let me give you an example. Imagine you're a Spanish teacher. Mm -hmm. You're a Spanish teacher. What would you teach your student? ¿Qué le pusiera? El chavo del ocho o la familia peluche? <laughs> None of them. <laughs> no, no, but this is not because you like or not. No, but I'm talking about the vocabulary because. But in El Chavo del Ocho is, is general. Maybe El Chavo del Ocho because Familia Peluche, they don't speak well. Exactly, they, they exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't put Familia Peluche to my student because. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will put El Chavo del Ocho because mm -hmm. the story is simple. The vocabulary is simple. Mm -hmm. And he yeah. will understand more. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, por cuestión de que no, es que me cae mal, no me gusta. No, es cuestión de. No, I think because they use a lot of local words, Mexican words. Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. So, okay. do you see? So, it, like, let's do the listening. Mm -hmm. So, when you have these are tips. So, when you have the listening part on the, on the TOEFL exam, this is what they want 
you to pay attention to. In English, you will hear parts of a conversation or lectures lasting from three to five minutes. Each listening passage is followed by five or six questions. Again, no prior knowledge is necessary. Okay, so right there is simple. Just pay attention. <laughs> so... Guest content and guest purpose questions. Remember guest. Let's begin with gist content and gist purpose questions. Remember that the gist of something is the main point or key idea. Gist content questions ask gist content. Remember that the So what is gist? Is the main idea or the key idea? Okay. En buen salvadoreño, entonces, ¿cuál es el punto de esto? That's the gist. The gist of something is the main point or key idea. Gist content questions ask you to identify the main topic or idea of the listening conversation or lecture. Just purpose questions ask you to identify what the main purpose of the conversation or lecture is. You can recognize just content and just purpose questions because they use phrases like mainly about, mainly discussing, why this is the student, or what is the main purpose. Here are two things to keep in mind when answering just content and just purpose questions. In the listening section, there will always be either a just content question or a just purpose question, but never both. This question will always be the first question after listening to the passage. Also, sometimes the lectures and the conversations can have two main ideas. In this case, the just content or just purpose questions may ask you to choose two of the four answer options instead of just one. Let's look at some samples of GIST content and GIST purpose questions. So remember it says, well, today I had hoped to show you some computer slides, but uh, this morning when I popped out into the lab to set up the equipment, I discovered that uh, the projector needs bulb replacement. Needless to say, we didn't have a spare. So today you get to see my drawing skills, or uh, shall I say lack, lack of drawing skills of nice computer illustrations. So please bear with me. Why does the professor say this? So what is the gist? What is the gist of this passage, class? The gist of the yes. of the of the patches was to ask the class for patience. For oh, patience. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he explained that the computer wasn't working, the slide wasn't working, this wasn't working. He's not a good drawer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what the the whole passage was about. Okay. So that would be the gist. Mm -hmm. Now, what is a detailed question? Creo que la palabra lo dice, a detailed question. Then answer the question. Oops. Not offhand, but... Now let's talk about detailed questions. Detailed questions ask you about information that is stated in a small part of the passage. They generally focus on the who, what, when, where, and why. Detailed questions usually take one of these formats. According to the paragraph X, occurred because. According to paragraph X, 
which is true of the author's description of mentions which of the following. There are two major traps that people fall into on detailed questions. Both of them can be avoided if you're careful not to choose an answer simply because it contains keywords from the passage. The first trap is to choose a true statement that was contained in the passage, but that doesn't answer the question. The second mistake people make is to accidentally choose an answer that contains a lot of words from the passage, but actually it states a different idea or changes the relationships between things. For example, sleeping makes me happy is very different from happiness makes me sleep. Let's work on a sample question. Listen to the audio program about a conversation and try to get the right answer. I dropped my physics course because I discovered it didn't meet my degree. So here I would recommend you, before you do that, read the question, what is the man doing? And read the options you have. Physics course because I discovered it didn't meet my degree requirements. You wouldn't know anyone in the class who'd like to buy the course book, would you? Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? Well, yeah, if it's within a reasonable period of time. Listen again to part of the conversation. Then answer the question. Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? What is the man doing when he says this? Really? I could do that, could I? So what is he doing? He's showing the woman his excitement on getting the information. He's telling the woman he thinks she's teasing him. He is letting the woman know that he considers what she says to be untrue. Or he is asking for confirmation about his understanding of what the woman said. It's A, right? B. Mm -hmm. You think it's B? I'm sorry? Yeah, for me it's D. D. Mm -hmm. D as in Delta. Mm -hmm. Asking for confirmation. No, but you listen to the question. What? Yeah, when he says really. <laughs> so what is what is really? If you write if you write really, what do you what do you write? Who's the meaning for the really? Um question mark. And exclamation. Mm, exclamation, yeah. Exclamation and question mark. For the Both? Que lo dijo. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yes, because listen, listen to what he said. David, usted es el escritor acá. ¿Cómo escribiría? Really? Question mark and exclamation mark, correct? It seemed like with the exclamation point, yes. Because he didn't say, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Y yo me fuera también porque aquí dice he's showing excitement mm. so I think that's a key word right there okay. and but if you bought it new and kept the receipt could I what is the man doing when he says this really I could do that could I were you able to get it that's right. By him using a tough question at the very end, we understand he's confirming his understanding about what the woman told him. Therefore, choice D is correct. You see? <laughs> you are right. Oh, man, you got that one right. But for me, you know, for me, I would have put A. <laughs> for, uh, for me, it sounded like uh, he was... Asking for confirmation. No, no. I, of course he was asking for confirmation. But <laughs> but 
Es el hecho que really? Uh -huh. O sea, he was I don't it's like it's like you, you remember in your job hey, you están regalando donuts. Really? Where? It's like you're showing you're exciting about oh really good. Okay. But that's good. That's good. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> So those are detailed questions. Get purpose. Hold on, let me see the other video. But you know what? Um, okay, so this was just a review, but I really, really encourage you. You see, por ejemplo, um, you see here? Mm -hmm. Guest purpose questions. I would really recommend you to copy this and paste it on on YouTube. Okay. And you will find many. It's beautiful. YouTube is a very uh, YouTube is a very good tool. You will find many, many, many examples. Okay. A guest purpose question. What is the other one? Detail. A detail question. Put a gift detailed question and you will have more examples and in fact you can even have some examples from some examples from from the original test oh that would be great yes okay so um i thank you very much and uh i hope you have a very very good weekend if you have any questions when you you know during the week. Whenever you have a question or a doubt in English, please tell me. Send me a message. But send it send it directly to me. Okay. Because sometimes when I open when I when I see like, oh my God, 48 chats in one room, <laughs> you know. Uh, I don't know who, who they're talking to. So I have to go back and this the letter primero to <laughs> But if you oh. write that, if you write directly to me, then I will know. Okay. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay. Teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, teacher. You're well, welcome, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. bye.